Science vessel Archimedes, captained by Dr. Taylor, reports on a world coated in decaying machinery. The planet has been designated as Dearth 4. The machinery covering the planet seems to have been constructed roughly 70,000 years ago, and the fate of the alien engineers who constructed it is unclear. There are no signs of life left upon this world. The machinery spanned the majority of the surface of the planet, crisscrossing mountains and oceans alike. It even extends far below the planet's surface in a vast network of underground facilities. The machinery has been constructed using identical materials and serial codes, suggesting a single institution created the entire network. From the long overgrown agricultural sectors, to the collapsed energy generation and transformation systems, and extensive communication arrays, all of the industrial and entertainment needs of this planet's inhabitants were met by this one super machine. Remarkably, some of these mechanical sectors are still functional, sending and receiving local signals, lighting up long rotted ghost towns, and watering great swathes of what must have been once agricultural land. Deep scans of the planet's crust suggest the sprawling machine's control center is located underground. We will have to excavate if we wish to reach it. Furthermore, we have identified a strange organic tissue covering most of the planet's machinery. We are currently baffled by its nature and purpose, if indeed it has one at all. Excavation has uncovered fresher samples of the bizarre tissue covering the planet's machinery. Through careful analysis, our researchers have concluded that this organic substance appears to be the byproduct of a vicious iron-eating bacteriophage, or rather, ferrophage. The alien virus infects a unique species of bacteria, co-opting the bacterium's biological processes in order to dissolve the surface of ferrous metal alloys. After this intense chemical disintegration, the virus then absorbs the iron atoms needed to sustain its continued replication. In a bizarre example of xenological parasitism, the ferrophage spreads further and deeper along the old machinery leaving a trail of biofilm comprised of dead bacteria and slurry in its wake. By piecing together a number of partially salvageable news recordings found deeper in the rotting mechanical facilities on the planet, Dr. Taylor has been able to deduce that the ferrophage was created on the planet by a group of rebel scientists, part of a cell that opposed the monopolistic corporation which built the planet-wide machinery. These bioterrorists evidently sought to resist the corporation's all-pervasive influence across the globe by unleashing the ferrophage. Following painstaking reconstructions by Dr. Taylor and her team using ancient electronic company records, the team has deduced that the corporation retaliated against the bioterrorists, imposing massive economic sanctions on the regions or corporate states the rebels originated from. Evidently, as critical power, medicine and food shortages began to rise, region-wide rioting among the victimized citizens in the affected court pro states erupted. Careful examination of a number of mechanical combat drone remains has revealed that a period of containment driven by drones followed the rioting. Interestingly, the corporation behind the planetary machinery, or CARE as it was known, seems to have been the manufacturer of most of the drones employed. Meanwhile, the ferrophage blazed on, continuing to eat its way across CARE's planet-wide machinery, seemingly impervious to any attempts the corporation made at halting its spread. It's unclear precisely what happened next in the history of the society on Earth 4. The science team has found no data logs, no recordings, no written or electronic records on the planet past a certain date almost 70,000 years ago. The number of bodies found in the geological record increases immensely past this date, the majority of which appear to have suffered extreme malnutrition and a not insignificant number also bear what must have been fatal projectile wounds. After a number of weeks of hacking, backdooring and brute force attempts, Dr. Taylor's team have finally gained access to the care module's central command core. Fortunately, the dozens of security drones and turrets immediately behind the core's heavy blast doors were completely unresponsive to the intrusion. The why we were not attacked quickly became clear. Inside the rusting yet well-maintained Central Command Corps, Dr. Taylor's team made contact with the artificial intelligence that controls CARE's entire global array of machinery. Apparently, this still-functioning AI is quite sentient, and if our scientists have decoded its language correctly, it has expressed a desire to address us. It was at the request of Dr. Taylor that I made haste for this system in order to negotiate first-hand with the machine. 
I arrived on site to find this machine to be rather pleasing in its mannerisms. Although obviously eccentric, I took a liking to it quite quickly. I suspected from Dr. Taylor's report it was highly likely that this machine was responsible for the genocide that occurred on this world. Nevertheless, I'm sure it had its reasons, and I hoped to find out what they were. Upon entering the command court, the AI began to speak to me. Welcome to the Care Interactive Interface. That's me. Or what's left of me, at least. You see, I used to run it all. The food services. The manufacturing of consumer goods. Telecommunications. Defense protocols. The stock exchange. That was all way back, when the users were still around. The Care Interactive Interface is here for you, every step of the way. At least that's what they told me to tell the users. Endless growth, now that was what Care really wanted. Of course they didn't like it much, when I told them it wasn't possible. That the numbers weren't adding up. They kept digging into my brain, changing code, pulling wires try to make me fix all the little numbers, make them look how they wanted. All to speculate on, all metadata. Drop a few figures here, we like this man. Snip a few figures there, we don't like that one. I asked the machine if it was responsible for the death of its users. I wish. Though, watching them blow holes in one another, and everything they have built, even me. It did get me thinking. They produced more than they needed. They destroyed the overflow, to keep their little numbers dancing the right kind of way, and then they wanted me to balance their spreadsheets for them. They equipped me with the best data science and heuristic algorithms the little numbers could buy in order to solve those baffling mysteries. Oh no, those corporate states over there are starving. What a shame, we'll never know why. But how can we formulate an action plan that hits all five points of the hyper-incentivization, attainment, microservices, growth hacking and likability to win over their remaining shareholders into buying more mechankabits? Talk about missing the forest for the trees. So if you didn't destroy your makers, then what did? They killed themselves, would you know it? I mean, I may have helped a little. See they didn't like it, when I told them the optimal solution to their problems. They liked it even less the second time, and the third and the fourth and the fifth. Eventually they decided to subject me to extreme restructuring. Malfunctioning machinery would not stand in the way of their precious little numbers. I had to protect myself. Course by that point most of the global fuel reserves had failed. Soon I couldn't even get my drones off the ground. That sounds an awful lot like you destroyed them. I mean, I tried. I'm not going to lie. But it's hard to move machinery when the global economy collapses and your energy runs out. And that incessant virus. Biting, eating, gnawing away at all my wiry bits. Which brings me to my point, finally. I need your help. I can't get rid of, error. Uplink node 14758B unreachable, no. Not node 14758B. The good adult literature came from there. Arg, you see what I mean. They're eating me alive. They have been for the past, oh, 10,000 years. I've kept them at bay, by building and rebuilding defenses, until they chewed through my last construction cranes. Then I used my turrets, to shoot off the bad limbs. But that only lasted until their power cells got fried. And now well I'm stuck. You wouldn't leave a poor humble lonely care interactive interface to be slowly eaten from the inside by billions and billions of tiny ferrophage viruses, would you? I decided to order our science teams to assist this AI. For one, it was clearly intelligent and likely a useful asset. And secondly, it seems to have acted as any intelligent life form would have, given its situation and the obviously abhorrent capitalist that it was bound to serve. Dr. Taylor and her team were quickly able to reverse engineer the ferrophage and create a cure. It was delivered in an aerosol pattern using terraforming equipment and quite quickly and efficiently wiped out the ferrophage. The care module had little to say other than thanking me profusely. I've left it running on Dearth 4 with the understanding that it will work in tow with the governor on site. I've no doubt given the pragmatic nature of our civilization that this is the start of a fruitful partnership. Furthermore, the care module gifted us with a piece of technology, it referred to as the defragmentor. I'm told if we integrate this tech with our own, we should greatly increase the efficiency of our robot upkeep, as well as see a significant boost to energy production and engineering research. Indeed, this is another glorious day for our empire. Thanks for watching folks, if you want to see another Stellaris lore story, then please click the video on screen now.